Good morning. It's time to do a bit of seed sowing and it's chilies, sweet peppers and aubergine day. I must caveat though, there's a couple of chilies I've already sown. I only did them less than a week ago. I've done the orange habanero and the red scotch bonnet because they're hotter, they take a little bit longer to germinate. So I sneakily did those off camera the other day. But I will show you because I've set up my little propagator with the heat matting. So I'll show you where they're living at the moment. And I don't know what we look like. We might be getting a little bit of action on one of them already. It looks like one of the red scotch bonnets already coming through, but I don't know because it might be a bit of fluff. I didn't want to poke it <laughs> and you know investigate any further because there's just a little bit of something showing but like I say that's not even been a week really and they're already well something's going on so fingers crossed that's good so I'll just show you what I did with these seeds last night they have been soaking in a little bit of tea just a fairly weak tea solution and uh, because that's slightly acidic and the tannins in it it does help tenderize the coating a little bit sometimes they just need a little bit of help just to sort of start off the germination process and that'll give them a little bit of a leg up they have done it before i've done it with and without uh, to varying degrees of success both ways because of course you never really know you know if your seed's a little bit older or if you've got a seed that's not as viable things like that it's a bit bit of a difficult one really but i thought well for the sake of it we'll do it and all it is is I just made up a normal sort of cup of tea, no milk, no sugar, anything like that. They like it neat. About 50% tea and then 50% topped up with water because it doesn't want to be too, too strong. I've got little coloured sticks in each of these containers and some of them, this will look a bit confusing at first until I explain it. Like that one there that's got a red and a green in it. So I came up with a little method which saved writing the seed labels every single time. I've written down all my varieties and I've put the stick colour at the side of it. So just for example, I've got, where's my yellow stick? There we go, in this one on the end. I have to be careful I don't mix these up though. So my yellow stick I've got in my book is the Anaheim Chili. So when I saw all my different varieties, all in the little rows, you know, I'll have Anaheim, Jalapeno, Cayenne, whatever, you know, in this here. What I'm going to do is, where I've got my Anaheim row, I'll put my little stick like that. So I'll have coloured sticks in all of these. And of course, I'm going to forget what these are, but when I look in my little book, I'll go, oh, these that have germinated are that. These jalapenos haven't yet, because that's my green stick, whatever it might be. And when I come to prick these on into individual little pots, because I've got loads and loads of these, I'm going to put a coloured stick in every single pot. So at a glance, I know, oh, I've got five. Anaheim it might be then I might have two jalapeno that germinated so I have two with a green stick in and it that's that's my method basically now because I've only got however many colors one two three four six I must just have six colors when it's come to some of the other ones these are sweet peppers these here and the green and the red this is California wonder sweet pepper bell pepper and I've chosen those colors because on the seed packet it's showing green ones and when they've matured and they're the red ones so I thought ah oh, that makes sense right I'll do <laughs> I'll do a green stick and a red stick and this one I'll just double double check yeah yellow and orange stick this is another bell pepper this is Puster gold is this one so I mean they're generally like a yellowy orange pepper so I've had to do two sticks because of course I've got a chili with an orange stick and a chili with a yellow stick so I've had to double up and that's my little colour coded system aubergines I've got two purple sticks I mean I don't know if you can see it's a bit far away isn't it but I've got two purple sticks there or blue whatever you want to call it and just one in that one now I know I've got a purple stick blue stick whatever for the chilies as well but when the leaves come through on that it's going to be pretty obvious they do look quite different the aubergine leaves are uh, they've got like a bit of fluff to them a bit of fuzzy sort of surface so I've got one stick is the long purple aubergine, two sticks is Galene F1 it is. So yeah, that's my little method. And uh, yeah, it just helps me keep track of it, but I don't have to write umpty two labels. I'm sure there's plenty of other things you could use as well. Um, you know, you could even stick a Lego man in the top of each of them. You could go, that's Darth Vader, Lego man is, you know, meet Anaheim pepper and, you know, Chewbacca's jalapeno. 
The compost that I'm using for this, these have been stood on top of the boiler. It's just been warming up on top of there, um, just so that these are a, a nice starting temperature for the seeds. And the water, I've got my little recycled, again, you know, my little recycled tub, and I've got one of those little spouts on the end of it. I'll show you that up close. You probably know, you've probably seen them, but you know, this little spouty thing. Yeah, so I'm going to do aubergines in these little individual pots just because I don't really fancy pricking those out. I think they can grow on for a little while longer in their own little pots. The chilies I'll do, as I mentioned in here, with the little sticks in just in short rows. I've done that before and it's always worked out quite well as that. And peppers are probably going to go in that one of their own. So I'll bring you in a bit closer and then you can see what's going on. And this is where they're going to germinate. All right, there we go. So, I've got my little uh, individual modules there. And so I've got my double stick aubergines, the Galene aubergines. I didn't have many seeds left, I only had three. So they're in individual ones and let's hope all three come up. Um, the early long purple aubergine, I've got three modules, but I've put two seeds because I had quite a few seeds. So two per station there and let's hope that we get at least one coming up. The one, if, they, if I get one that's got two growing in it, I'll just snip off the one that's the, the weaker one just to leave one per station. The green stick is the jalapeno chilli. I've only got four seeds left on that. So again, I've put them in individual modules and I'm going to hope that I get all of those coming through. These that have got the orange and the yellow sticks are the Puster Gold. And I've just done two of those. Um, I've grown those for the last couple of years. Now, I'm not great at sweet peppers, I must admit. And these didn't do brilliantly, but those are saved seed. So, I mean, I'm, I'm giving it a go. Let's see. I mean, they are quite big seeds. They're much bigger than any of the other bought ones that I've got. So, I don't know if that means anything or not, but we'll find out. But in each of those two, I've put two per module again just to up the chances of at least something coming through in this one we've got some sweet peppers again i've got me my green and my red stick is the california wonder so i've just done four seeds in that side and these ones i think it translates as like red bull heart or something it's italian i think on the on the seed packet make it in italian and you could put 50p on because it adds a bit of a glamour factor does that i'm sure that's what they do uh, but yeah four in there and i'm really hoping those come through because they're lovely of those and quite expensive to buy as well so fingers crossed that they're all right but they're the first time i've grown those so we'll see see how they go and then the main one with the chilies in 
so I've got my little rows I've only put four per variety of these so the white one they're the ancho chilies but I think by rights I think that's a poblano and I think when you dry them is when they turn into well you call them ancho once they're dried I believe that's the case but they're a really nice big pepper and they're not they're not hot at all really but you dry them you can grind them up and put them in a lot of sauces and Mexican dishes make a lovely powder out of them and it's meant to be really nice and smoky so I'm quite excited for that one so I really hope those come through and they do really well they're the Anaheim peppers so another sort of longish green pepper that's not got a great deal of heat to it at all those ones so a new one for me so nice to try um, this purpley blue stick, those are the purple gusto, so those I've grown before and that makes, if you give it lots of room, that makes a lovely plant, it's really attra attractive and the peppers themselves are a bit, look a bit like a cross between a normal cayenne and a jalapeno, sort of, the, you know, the shape of them and they're about, oh, a couple of inch long, they, they vary a bit, but you know, a couple of inch long, there or thereabouts and really dark, sort of reddish purple colour um, just sort of an average medium-ish heat, they're not too bad those ones, so probably hotter than a jalapeno but maybe not quite as hot as a reasonably hot cayenne, not as hot as a lemon drop I don't think either, so a nice average cooking pepper, uh, cooking chilli are those ones, you know if you like a bit of heat but you don't like things crazy hot they're, they're a good one and they're so pretty of those and they've got a slightly kind of smoky-ish flavour I'd say as well lovely I really like those so I'm hoping those come good because they're saved seed so you never know and I, in fact I didn't grow them last year it was from the year before so again we'll see what comes through on that the orange one is a Medina chilli so that's quite a longish red chilli again a sort of a bit cayenne type heat it's a bit like a beefed up cayenne in the size of it and how it looks is that one but last year because the chilies got attacked by the green fly and no matter how much i tried to sort of clean them off with the cotton bud and wash them and that kind of thing they did do a little bit of a number on the chilies that i had inside so that's another reason why i've not started them super super early because i want to get them growing and not have them here for quite as long just to limit the risk of uh, you know a green fly attack and that kind of thing but i think they did they, they suffered a little bit I think with a virus maybe that the green fly gave them and a lot of the chilli seedlings looked like they were doing really quite badly last year and I was a bit concerned I was going to lose them in the end a lot of them pulled through and they, they were all right in the end but it was a bit of a struggle so I did go down as an insurance policy I went down to uh, you know one of our local DIY merchant places and the, the Medina chilli was a bought one so and it were all right, I quite liked it. So I've saved the seed from that, and we'll give it another go this year because it's quite a good backbone chili for if you want to make sauces and chili jams and that sort of thing. It's a nice one to sort of bulk it out. Just an average sort of baseline kind of chili is that one. And the red one, that's the KN, and there were some free seeds that came with a magazine. But yeah, lovely, nice, mediumish kind of heat, nothing too crazy. Really, really good backbone chili. Yeah, I'm quite happy with this range. I've got nothing that's a crazy, crazy, super hot. No but jalocki as any of that kind of thing. The hottest ones I've got in my little box here are the, uh, you know, the orange habaneros and the red scotch bonnet. Those are the ones that are going to add the beef and the sort of punch to the chilli sauces that I make next year. Providing I get them over the line. Hey, anyway, it's all in the ether, isn't it? That we'll see. So these are now going to go into the propagator and I've got my chunky bit of uh, polystyrene underneath, uh, my heat mat, my little tray just to keep the water off everything, just control the water in a little bit there and I can, I can fit these this way around, yeah I can fit all of those in, I can fit my little box with my hots in there, nice and insulated, all tucked up in bed and the little probe, I'm going to just poke this just inside the box just so we've got a reading of what's going on actually inside there and I want that to be about 25 and I've got my little that's my little thermostat is that so that's going to read out the temperature that, that it's at and it's adjustable I'm going to plug that in get the lid back on get my little towel wrapped around them and that's it we'll just leave them and i'll just keep checking on them make sure that nothing's drying out and as soon as something shows and germinates 
I've got to get it straight into the light. I'm going to have to rig it up on the in the living room on the windowsill because that's south facing there. Just give it as much light as possible, and uh, yeah, hopefully won't end up with anything too leggy. I've done them in January before, quite early January, and I don't have a brilliant setup. I've got a couple of little bendy LED lights, but they're they're not they're not really up to spec. You know, it's only a cursory offering. So again, starting them a little bit later, I'm hoping I've got maybe another sort of three or four week ahead of getting green fly attack and fungus gnat attack, and the light levels are improving every day, so that's going to help too, isn't it? So yeah, I'm just adapting a little bit this year, trying something new, and let's see if I have a better run of it this time round. One lid on. There we go. Yeah, all done. And uh, we'll have a little bit of a recap on these in a bit, and you know, see when they start showing through. I'll give you some updates on how these are going once they start showing through so don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done and then you won't miss the video coming up where I show you them hopefully germinating all fine and looking delightful and thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.